In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We have come together in prayer this morning to God our Father as we continue our journey through this Easter season, seeking to discover the depth of our faith, God's love for us, and how we're going to respond in our daily living. In our prayer today, we're asked to remember John Fury, Gerard Brunto and Floris Corret, whose death anniversaries occur. Now, as we come to pray, we acknowledge we do fail. We ask for God's forgiveness and healing. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us now pray. Be present to your family, O Lord, we pray, and graciously ensure those you have endowed with the grace of faith an eternal share in the resurrection of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Our reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A bitter persecution started against the church in Jerusalem, and everyone except the apostles fled to the country district of Judea and Samaria. There were some devout people, however, who buried Stephen and made great mourning for him. Saul then worked for the total destruction of the church. He went from house to house, arresting both men and women, and sending them to prison. Those who had escaped went from place to place, preaching the good news. One of them was Philip, who went to a Samaritan town and proclaimed the Christ to them. The people united in welcoming the message of Philip preached, either because they had heard of the miracles he worked, or because they saw them for themselves. There were, for example, unclean spirits that came shrinking out of many who were possessed, and several paralytics and cripples were cured. There was a great rejoicing in the town as a result. The word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O sing to the glory of his name. O render him glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous your deeds. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Come and see the works of God, tremendous his deeds among them. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river dry shore. Let our joy then be in him. He rules forever by his might. Please stand. <coughs> Alleluia, Alleluia. All who believe in the Son have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, says the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. 
He who believes in me will never thirst. But as I have told you, you can see me and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I shall not turn him away. Because I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. Now the will of the one who sent the will of him who sent me is that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. Yes, it is my Father's will that whoever sees the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise him up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we have the first bitter persecution of the church and its effect. We're told those who had escaped went from place to place preaching the good news. In a sense, the persecution had backfired. Instead of crushing the word, it had been the cause for spreading the word. And so it was to be in the future history of the church. The reality is nothing can overcome the power of the Holy Spirit that exists in ordinary men and women. So when we are under pressure to conform to the world around us, do we stand firm in our own beliefs and open ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit? Or do we just give way and go along with what everybody else wants? This is when our witness to the good news is tested. It is important to remember we're never alone. The Holy Spirit is actually living within us, wanting to activate us and empower us each and every day of our lives and in every situation. Then in our Gospel today, we have Jesus reminding us that if we come to him, we will never be turned away. Jesus is the bread of life that sustains and nourishes us on our journey through life. Now we can live our lives as witnesses to this love that does not turn anyone away. We can be welcoming, generous and loving. We can care for people who are turned away by others because we are able to see Christ in them and in each one of them without exception. As Mother Teresa said of the dying, the poor, the lonely and the unwanted. And let us not be ashamed or slow to do the humble work because each of them is Jesus in disguise. Today in our materialistic culture, those who have little or nothing are looked down upon. People, for example, who are forced to leave their homes because of violence by their own governments are greeted in host countries with fear, and their stories are often not believed. As Christians, we need to have a loving attitude towards others, including those who are rejected and despised. You know, this passage is in many ways reminiscent of the conversation earlier with Nicodemus, the person who came to Jesus by night. Nicodemus struggled to understand how Jesus could speak of someone born again of water and the Holy Spirit. And now the crowd struggles when Jesus says that whoever comes to him will never be hungry. The next words remind us that God the Father so loved the world that he sent his Son that the world might be saved. And Jesus says to each one of us, all that the Father gives to me will come to me. This is so important because it tells us Jesus will never turn away anyone who comes to him. And that also applies to each and every one of us. It should also apply to our attitude to each and every person. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to God our Father, whose Son rose from the dead to be our Saviour. Bring peace to our life, Lord, and have mercy on your world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear Father, give your church all that she asks of you in the name of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear Let your Holy Spirit lead all who teach and all who learn into the full truth as promised by Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear by the cross and burial of Christ, bring us to the glory of his resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear 
Teach your church all over the world to love what you command and to desire what you promise. Lord, hear us. We pray for our own needs of today and those of all our brothers and sisters. We pray for those who are ill, especially from the coronavirus. We pray for those who have died. Lord, hear us. Lord God, teach us at all times to fear and love your holy name. For you never withdraw your guiding hand from those you establish in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. We'll pray the preface of Easter number four, Eucharistic prayer number two. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Andrew and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At our Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, <coughs> that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other the sign of peace without physical contact. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christ, the body of Christ. We pray the prayer of spiritual communion for those unable to be with us this morning. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Let us now pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and glorify God in your daily lives. Amen.